Hello, and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. We are two sisters who share our fondness for knitting and other crafts, <laughs> the things that we create, and our love for the knitting community. And we do it with a twist of both the frivolous and the frugal. I am Frivolous Dawn, and in our family's birth order, I am the fourth of eight children. And I am Faithful Nikki. I am number three of the eight in the birth order. There are two other family members that are part of this podcast who are not able to join us today, but they will as soon as they can. Um, um, frugal Miss Penny, she's the oldest in our family, um, and Faithful Brianna, she is the daughter of number seven. And both of those stay involved in the podcast behind the scenes, but until their schedules get a little less busy, um, it may be a little bit um, before you join or before they are able to join us. And thank you for all the kind comments when I did one last week where I went solo. Um, I've been told that I can't use the term shorts. Um, I, I called it a frivolous and frugal shorts because there is already a whole platform on YouTube where they use the word shorts for very small or short in length videos. So I think the next one might be called the frivolous and frugal fast one. Wow, how about that? Um, for those of you who are returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back. We appreciate that you um, pick your time to spend with us and know that we are very grateful for that time. And for any new viewers, thank you so much for joining us. We'd love to hear how you heard about us. Feel free to leave those in the comments below. Um, just a little bit of background on our family for those who may be new. Um, we are a family of eight children. We grew up in a small town in eastern Iowa. And we're about two years apart on average. So um, we often refer to ourselves by the number we are in the birth order. And most of the time we get it right. <laughs> Sometimes we don't. Um, somebody was asking about, um, I don't know how we got in this conversation about how we were all named, but um, a little bit of background. My mom was first going to name all of us after money. So hence Penny, um, Nikki and her twin brother, Nick, were named after their Nicolette and Nicholas after the nickel. When I was born, she wanted to name me Demetra after the dime. Thank goodness her mother said, I don't like that name. Now, I don't know if she cried, but in my mind, she cried so much that she didn't like that name. So how else was I named? The lady who shared the room with my mom after giving birth said, you know, you could call her Dawn since that's when she was born. Okay, I was named by a stranger. Yeah, okay, fine. And then she must have had a little religious experience for the boys because it's Matthew, Mark, Michael, John. <laughs> Almost a religious experience. And then the only one I ever remember being born was John, the youngest. And when mom was going to the hospital or maybe before that, she wanted to know what we wanted. I said I wanted a baby sister or a pony. <laughs> so I'm not real knowledgeable in how all of that worked either. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't get either one. I got a brother. <laughs> so anyway, welcome to our podcast family. Um, oh, why did I go down that tangent? This could be a long episode. <laughs> Again, oh. we do appreciate all of you being here. So without further ado, go ahead and grab your knitting, your favorite note-taking device, and a sense of humor as we are going to be on episode 99 of the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. Can you believe 99? Oh, it's amazing. Stay tuned for 100. <laughs> we have a few things planned. <laughs> well, um, I will start off with what's around my neck. I am wearing the Butterfly or Papillon. That was a pattern by Marin Jeanette's. Um, I knit this a couple of years ago. The color gradient you see is a Knit Picks Chroma in the Lupine colorway. And then the black is Knit Picks Gloss. I knit that on a US 4. Um, it is a very popular pattern. I, in you know, did I enjoy the knit? It was a good challenge because it's all short rows. I wear it like this because if I put it out, it's a deep set triangle. So, it is deeper almost than it is wingspan wide. And for me, that's a hard shawl to wear, typically like you would wear a shawl down your back and over your shoulders because it goes down to my butt, but it's not long enough to bring around. So that's why I kind of just wear it bunched up um, like this. Um, 
It is a pattern that's for sale on Ravelry and the current price for it is $15. Um, if I were to do the frugalometer, the yarn, I would probably call a two. I think Knit Picks is very reasonably priced for a yarn. I did give it a $3 sign for the pattern. $15 is, um, to me, pretty high for a single pattern. But to try to write the details out of this pattern, I thought was well worth the money. So um, I did this along with several other ladies, and I'm very happy with it. I say that, but then I'm, I'm in no hurry to knit another one. So <laughs> we'll plan. <laughs> All right. Now, I know you, you're not wearing anything, Nikki, but do you want to show something? Yeah. Uh, Don made a pair of socks for me. And I keep looking forward to wearing these. I love the colors. And then this is the opposite side. Yeah, so a little bit of those, those are ones that I cranked on my circular sock machine. I have a new sock machine. It's called the True Knit. So that's 64 um, slot cylinder. So think of it as 64 stitches. And that is Active Yarn, which is a German-based yarn. And I believe that colorway was called denim, if I'm correct. And I'm just trying, um, if you can hold those up a little bit, Nikki, I'm trying something new on the heel. I'm doing what they call an antique heel or a deeper heel. So I add extra rounds. So that gives you a little more room when you slide your foot in but more so because I don't want that sliding down into your shoe. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying those shorties. I don't know um, if you've worn them yet or not, but I'll be real interested to see if they stay where they're supposed to around your foot. So yeah, they're very nice. Yeah, and that is a machine washable wool, which is nice. Well, I don't know if the label says that, but I machine wash and dry all my socks. So there you go. And then. <coughs> Excuse me, I'd hit the cough button, but we don't have one. <laughs> this is in the spirit of the upcoming West Knits Mystery Knit Along that starts in October. This was um, one of the uh, mystery knits that were one of my favorite. It was called Slip Stravaganza. Um, it is, to me, one of the most stunning shawls that I have knit, and it lays really nice across my shoulders, so I wear it quite often. Um, I knit this with mode. Lux yarn. The three different grays, I think, were called like gray. I should get this right. Um, oh, pewter, platinum, and coal. Um, and again, those were mode knits. I think she's an indie dyer from the Minneapolis St. Paul area. Great website if you want to go to it. And then the pink was a discontinued yarn I'd had in my stash for a while from Yarn Carnival. And um, now I think Yarn Carnival is still dying. I think this base may be discontinued. Um, but it was called Snake Charmer and the Star Status Lipstick colorway. And that was knit on a US four. I gave the, the yarn for that $3 signs on the frugalometer. And I gave the pattern um, $2 signs. Now, the pattern currently is for sale for $7.79. Um, I learn so much with every West Knit mystery because you get the videos every week that kind of walk you through. So, um, Lots of different techniques I used on this. This was the first time that I went to a, a stitch count of, or um, a border where I think there were 954 stitches on the needles. But this drape is amazing. And I think um, it is very visual. So I loved every technique in there. So uh, we'll talk more about the West Knit Mystery um, at the end in case anybody else is going to enter into the madness with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's move on to what's on your needles or what are you working on? Anything you want to share, Nikki? Um, I am just finishing putting the border and details on the army cross stitch. Oh, I can't wait to see this. Look at that. So I'm about a fourth of the way done with the outlining of everything, but it's getting closer. Wow. And then I forget kind of some of the terms you use in cross stitch. Is that on, is it Ada? Cloth? I think that's how you say Ada cloth. Yeah. That's, how, that's how I say it, but yeah. So that's a little monotonous doing all the backing, but. Well, it's what brings it to life though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. It really yeah. does. So. And you have done those for all of our siblings that are in the military. Yes, I have. So I have one Air Force yet to go, so. <laughs> I did the Navy one for Steve years ago, based on yours. 
Wow, that is spectacular work. Now, any rough idea the number of hours that are in that now? Oh, no. No. We'll just say plenty. Yeah, plenty. <laughs> He's out of trouble that way. <laughs> or less trouble. And um, cross stitch is really making a surge back. I am impressed with how many people now in the knitting world who are also cross stitching. Well, and I see that on Instagram too. You know, yeah. the, the crossover. I guess I never realized how many people cross over from one to the other. And yeah, and cool. those those YouTubes are called floss tubes, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, YouTube's dedicated to cross stitch or maybe embroidery too. So. Um, yeah, thank you for showing that. That'll be fun to see that when it's finished. Yeah. And now that it's starting to get a little cooler, maybe you'll get some more time to work on it. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I say that it's supposed to be 80 degrees here one day this week. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, all right, let me give you an update on this shawl I'm knitting. It is called Hollows. It's a pattern by Melody Hoffman, who is the designer behind Bee Mandarins. You'll see it kind of started up here with the garter tab and it has grown substantially. So it is going to be a gentle crescent and you can see the length is really increased. Um, we did a series of just stockinette and garter ridges with these large eyelet holes, but these two sections that you see in garter stitch were created by short rows and you can kind of see how the ebb and flow is. It's identical to the other side. I'm on a 60 inch needle right now and I can't um, extend it all the way out. So it is going to be nice and wide. I am in the final, oh, I say final stages. I hate to think how many stitches. These rows up here are gonna be repeated down below. So I've just started those. The rows are getting long, but it is a pretty simple knit. Now that yarn is showing true to color that you're seeing on the screen. It is a Cascade Heritage Silk in the Como Blue colorway. I don't know why I had so many skeins of this. Um, I put a little bit of that in my last Olga Jazzy, Lisa Hans um, shawl. I have all of this and I bet I'm still gonna end up with not quite a full skein when I'm done. Um, so this is knit on a US size six. I'm happy with it. I'm doing kind of an informal knit along with Miss Cheryl. We cast on at the mini meetup this year. Um, last time I chatted with her, hers is coming along as well. So um, when she's done, I'll ask if she can take a picture and maybe we'll be able to insert it together. Or maybe the next time we're together, we can both be wearing it. Um, as far as a frugalometer, I gave the fiber Cascade Heritage Silk a $2 sign on the frugalometer. And I gave a $2 sign for the pattern. It is currently on sale on Ravelry for $6.55. It is very well written. I think this is probably my first Melody Hoffman pattern I've done. At least that I can recall. I'd have to go in and actually do a search on Ravelry to figure that out. I was hoping to be done today, but <laughs> I'm not. So I don't know. It might, it might get done before the end of the year. Let's say that. All right. <laughs> All right, anything else you want to share, Nikki? What else? I'll get out. Uh, I just started the Air Force. Well, no, I'm continuing to work on the Air Force. Oh, yes. Look at that. So well, that's a work in progress there. That is one big piece of fabric. I know. <laughs> oh, gosh. I can't wait to see that progress as well. It'll be fun to watch it. Yeah. So it's just, you know... I guess I, as I'm getting back into it, I have to have my focus time to be yes. able to compass it, you know, that kind of stuff. So I can't be watching baseball or anything, you know, and be productive without pulling it out. Yeah, it's me. My focus time is first thing in the morning when the house is quiet and my brain is going to be a, as awake as it is all day. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the benefits of the first caffeine of the day as well. There you go. All right. Um, I have a new cast on that I want to show you. I had the sheer pleasure of going to Calgary, um, Alberta, Canada, to spend a few days with my dear friend, Norma. And um, this was some yarn I bought when I visited her last year. So I thought I'd better cast it on before I go. So this is the Capelet Deja Vu. Great. Yes, it is a pattern um, by Donna Palika. 
She is an owner of a yarn store in Chicago called Seven Arts Studio. This was one of her patterns for the Chicago Yarn Crawl a few years ago. And I saw the gals from Edmonton oh, podcast on. They used to have a yarn store there. Um, Cindy, one of the sisters, has done like five or six of these. So that was kind of my inspiration. But the yarn that I'm using is a yarn that I bought in Canada last year. So let me show you that because I don't see this yarn in the States here very often. It's by a company called Drops. And it is a Merino Extra Fine. And you'll see that I am using three colorways. Well, I was using, there's a yellow that's missing. That may be a Freudian issue because I don't like yellow. <laughs> but Norma, double dog dared me to add a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to go back to the pattern. According to the pattern, this gray at the top should have been yellow. I didn't want yellow next to my skin. So I just um, went to the gray. It ends with yellow as well, and I will end it with gray. It is a combination of a little bit of color work and then quite a bit of mosaic. And you can see these repeats are just repeating, and I'm on my final repeat. I think I have 50 or 60 rows left. They are getting a little bit longer, but this will just be an over-the-shoulder um, capelet to wear. I like it. I like it. Um, it's knit on a U.S. size five. I gave two dollar signs for the frugalometer. Um, interesting, when I bought the yarn last year, I swear I was looking at the pattern. And when I started knitting it, it became really obvious I was going to run out of both the pink and the yellow. So I thought, well, I'm back in Calgary. I might as well just go to the yarn store that we bought them. And of course, it's discontinued or they are discontinuing it. I could have ordered it from Wool Warehouse. And, um, Europe and had it sent to me, but I found it on Amazon, the same colorways. And so far, I haven't noticed a difference in the color, the colorways, that it was going to be an issue. So Drops is a very reasonable um, priced yarn, and um, I'm enjoying this so far. And what's interesting in the pattern, um, she has you just keep changing the length of your needle. So it's the same size needle through the whole project. But you start on a 16, then bump to a 24, I think a 32, a 40, and now I'm on a 60. Um, so it was kind of interesting. If you have interchangeable cords, that's perfect. I love my thick circulars. So I, I just happen to have enough for all those different sizes. Yeah, I don't know if you can catch a little bit of texture. It's probably hard to see. I don't know, yeah, you can, these kind of ridge right here. I don't know yeah. if you can see that. That doesn't quite look the same as this colorway, does it? It looks a little bit different. So maybe the third one's a little bit different too. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's pretty. This sequence is not the same as this sequence. Yeah. And I wonder if it was supposed to be. <laughs> Now's a fine time for me to notice that. Um, if not, it is now. So <laughs> I sure would like to get this done in the next couple of weeks. I do have some extra gray, so I may add some more gray at the end just to make it a little bit longer. I don't want it to be finished like right at the height of your boobs so that it looks weird when you're wearing it. So, and then I'll see if I like this neckline. If it's a little loose, I may go in and tighten that up. I tend to like a, a tighter neck. But again, that's called the Capelet Deja Vu by Donna Palika. All right. I think, Nikki, that is all that's on my needles right now, if you can believe that. Wow. Two things. I know. All right. Well, anything else you'd like to coming up, so. What's that? Just even less knit alongs coming up. So that is my goal to try to get my needles as clear as possible for that. So that when that is here, I can focus. I'll have other projects going, but my time first of part of every day will always be to try to stay up to date on the, the clues, depending on how much he has us knit from week to week. Yeah. Any interesting podcast statistics you'd like to share with us? Well, yes. Um, throughout all 99 episodes, you've had six different mannequins or things you've <laughs> traced around the country in. Uh, with, you had Pearl. Yeah. JC Pennies. <laughs> uh, Fred the Head. Flat Stanley. Oh, I forgot. Bella, yes. And Opal and Ruby. 
Yeah, Opal and Ruby are the two that we're using now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you know, because we don't travel the podcast anymore, we don't have any fun stories to tell about, you know, Pearl going down the highway with you. Yeah. But she could be in the fast lane. <laughs> yeah, that mannequin was scary. Oh, I'm pretty sure. sure they have Halloween stories about mannequins like that. <laughs> oh. Um, just a couple of things off my needles. Let me start with um, probably one of the most fun knits I've done in a while as far as if you're looking for a knit that doesn't take a whole lot of brain power, which I don't know about you, I can have my complicated knitting on the needles, but I also need something that I can do socially for knit groups or for watching TV, especially now that the football season has started here. Um, but anyway, this is the Italian summer scarf. The designer is called an Italian knitter. <laughs> she has a, a delightful little podcast, but you can see it started here at the narrow end and you increase till you've used 50% of your yarn. And when you've done that, you start the decreases. Now she used a hundred grams with hers. I used 160 grams. So I wanted mine a little bit longer. Um, so if you go on to Ravelry into the projects, you will see all kinds. Let's see if I can get this up a little closer. Oh, look at that mohair. <laughs> oh, this is absolutely delightful yarn. This is Julie Asselin, Lizu DK in the natural colorway, or her undyed. And then her mohair as well, it's called Antolia, and it's in the natural colorway. Um, so I had two skeins, 200 gram skeins for the Lizu DK. And I had two skeins of the mohair. I barely had to get into the second mohair. So I have a little bit of that mohair to share. But you know what? Can you just see this in lots of different colors? The, I tried when I was in Canada to get the yarn that was used um, in her design because it's it's called Sands Garn, I think, Lena. Um, I didn't find that, but I found a King Cole alternative that's the exact same yardage and same content it has either a cotton or a linen so I hope to do one of those for next summer um, but I liked or I felt like my wardrobe needed a little bit of one color because um, I tend to wear if I'm wearing a busy print I like to have something simple and I just think this will get a lot of wear um, not quite 100 inches I bet it goes 90 I didn't actually measure it but I would encourage anybody and you know did I say it's a free pattern oh yeah so let's knit a hundred of them well maybe a hundred's a little excessive maybe so I've yarned to do two more a pink one and a white one um for next fall or for next fall I'd like to knit them so I can wear them next summer again knit on a US6 um the pattern I gave a one dollar sign since it is free and the Julie Aslan yarn I gave a four dollar sign I love her yarn oh if you could feel this it is scrumptious. All right. So that is what's off my needles. Oh, I have one more, but anything else, Nikki, you wanted to share? Um, I just, I did find those shorties. Oh, I forgot about those. Yeah. Those are even shorter. Yeah. That's that same yarn company that active. Um, but if it'd be interesting for you to compare the two, cause I don't think I put a deep heel on that one. Yeah. I just noticed that too. The heels are different. So yeah. So that one may slide down into your shoe. I hope not, but that's yeah. what I'm trying to avoid. Also, I realize that some people have higher insteps. So when mm -hmm. they slide their foot into a sock, it's hard for them to make the curve down to the toe. So I'm oh, trying yeah. to create a little extra fabric in there so that it's not so tight. Um, and there are plenty of people in the circular sock machine world who are willing to share their knowledge. Um, with you about different ways to improve socks. So um, I've been quite busy actually lately doing socks on the machine. Um, I may try to do maybe a little uh, fast one episode um, on that possibly in the future. So they gave me lots of ideas for those to do. I think my next fast one though, if I had to guess would be all of my West knits in preparation for um, the mystery. Of course, everybody's talking about Stephen West now, but you look back and you think, wow, I can't believe I knit that. Or um, what did I do with that shawl? Because I don't remember seeing it for a while. So, <laughs> all right. Now, the next thing I have finished, I'm going to have to put on. Please, let's say, please don't let me show something here. I'm not supposed to. 
I finished the Aura Vest by Irene Lynn. I'll show it to you first and then I'll put it on. It is in that royal purple as you are seeing it. What a lovely written pattern. Um, I'm so glad Angela encouraged me to do one of her patterns. Um, so she is pretty size inclusive, which I appreciate. Um, let me get you a little bit of detail on this. Um, I used Cascade yarn in the Anchor Bay colorway in the deep purple. Anchor Bay is the, the yarn. It's a DK weight. Um, deep purple is the color. Knit on a four and a six. Now, when I was doing it, I thought these arms were way too long. In the pattern, when you see it, she is wearing a long linen dress that has um, sleeves kind of like mine where they're oversized. So the purpose of this deep armhole is so that when you wear it, you're not pulling up the arms of the what, what you're wearing underneath. So I probably wouldn't wear this like with a turtleneck or a long sleeve t-shirt because that long armhole would be very noticeable. But I wear lots of dresses that have that kind of um, longer. Yeah, so like this. So it is oversized, I think 12 inches of positive ease. Oh, I can I be able to show it, am I? We'll see, there you go. So you can kind of see the arm issue. Mm -hmm. So this, it's not gonna pull up on my tunic that I'm wearing. Next time I may make that just a little tighter. So I have lots of positive ease in here, but I like it, I'll wear it over dresses. Yeah, it looks really nice. I think I could get away with the one size smaller. I think I followed the pattern for a, US, or for a size six. I may try a size five again if I do it, but I am very pleased. Um, again, probably not the most flattering look with this type of a tunic, but put over a dress. It is a very cropped, if you will. It goes just to hit the top of my hip bones. Um, so I don't want it tightest around my abdomen where it is the largest. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, you know, neon signs would kind of do it too, wouldn't it? Like, you know, okay, Dawn, don't knit that again. <laughs> um, I did do a wet block on this and let it dry naturally. If I would like it a little bit tighter, I'm tempted to block it again, or not block it, get it wet again and throw it in the dryer because this is a cotton um, wool yarn. So it might tighten up a little bit, but I just love the look of the V. Um, by itself, it's way too low. I'd have to, I don't want to have to wear something underneath it. But um, yeah, for me who doesn't knit garments very often, I kind of like it. So. so. Yep, and other details about that um, frugalometer, I gave $2 signs for the fiber, and I also gave $2 signs for the pattern. It is currently on sale on Ravelry for $7.50. It is the Aura Vest by Irene Lynn. Look at some of her patterns. Oh, she just wrote a meticulous pattern too. And for, so I don't do a whole, whole lot of lace, but it was very easy to follow when I did them. So that is currently what is off my needles. What are you learning these days, Miss Nikki? Well, I kind of led to it before. Um, back in the cross stitching now, I need to get my, I guess the outside world focused in and turn off the baseball games and everything so I can get back to counting the stitches and putting, focusing all everything on that project. So that's a kind of a change of pace I haven't had all summer putting yeah. all that focus on that but uh you know I kind of do it right before I go to bed sometimes if I'm you know especially on the long rows of the same color I can just count them out and then you know go but that's been a hard change you know from going fast paced all summer long to yeah now do you have to use a special light yeah you bought me that hot light so oh, I yeah. Use that light. yeah I maybe it's an age thing too but I realized if I have a really nice light Mm -hmm. That just makes my eyes not have to work as hard and it doesn't seem to drain me as much. But I'm interested. You like your focus time at night. I like mine um, first thing in the morning. So yeah, well, and first thing in the morning, I usually go out walking. So that's where I get my long walks in as soon as I get up. And Yeah, maybe yeah. I should do that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, let me think about that. No, okay, I'll walk to the coffee pot and back. <laughs> Maybe make a loop around the kitchen. What the? Oh, whoa, slow down. <laughs> okay, what I'm learning, um, 
I failed at being a hooker. I know. And how does that work into a knitting podcast? Now get your mind out of the gutters. If Penny was here, she would tell me to. <laughs> I tried crochet again. I crocheted as a child, crocheted for many, many years, long before I ever knit. My mom taught all three of us to crochet. Interesting enough, she never read a pattern in her life, but um, I've crocheted a lot in my younger years. I wanted to do this beautiful cardigan called the Mezzo cardigan. Um, if I can uh, find a picture of it, I'll put it up. Uh, my friend Angela um, in California knit it. Well, actually it looked knit, but it's crocheted. So I found the yarn I had in my stash and I did a gauge swatch and everything, but my wrist hurt so bad. It was waking me up in the middle of the night. And I knew that I did not have time for a repetitive strain injury with the West MCAL just around the corner. So I didn't take it with me when I went to Canada and my wrist did not hurt me at all there. Not one iota. And I knit a lot while I was there. Came back that first night back, I crocheted again, and it was back. So I tried wearing a compression glove, and I just figured for now, I just have to set it aside. Maybe there'll be another time I can pick it up. I would like to do that cardigan, but not at the expense of, um, you know, pain and having to wear a brace. And again, I do not want a repetitive strain injury where I can't knit for a while. So... <laughs> Okay, so one thing off my bucket list, I'm not a hooker. Okay. <laughs> the other thing I'm learning kind of goes along with the capelet deja vu that I talked about. Um, when I've got to realize that when fellow knitters and friends encourage you to either try a new technique, um, encourage you to use a different color. So for me, that color is yellow. I don't know why I fight that originally. I will say I don't like yellow. And what I mean by that, it's nothing personal against the color yellow. Yellow next to my skin tone makes me look yellow or sallow. It's just not a real flattering color when it's up here against my neck. And so don't wear it next to your neck. I love pink and yellow together. I just can't have that yellow next to my skin. So thank you, Norma, for encouraging me to do that. I don't think I would have. Otherwise, I don't think I would have tried crocheting again if it wasn't for that encouragement. So whether it's a technique you think you would like to learn, like lace knitting or brioche or two-handed color work, just do some research and find a simple pattern so that you can have success initially. But when people keep encouraging you to try something new or to do something, I need to heed that um, call a little bit faster as opposed to fighting it. Because when I realize I'm fighting it, that means I really am trying to think about it. <laughs> but I don't want to think about it, but I think about it, but I don't want to think about it. Um, so I need to just be a little more attentive um, to what's being asked. So we can all say that in any aspect of our life. That encouragement is so important. It is, isn't it? And I don't know why. We don't heed the wisdom of the wise, the, the wise words, right? So experts before us, no matter what field you're in, um, professionally, whatever crafts you're in, when people who are more experts than we are encourage you to do something, that tells me that somebody encouraged them, they did it, and they had success with it. And, you know, again, I'm all about failure. I don't care if I try a new technique and it doesn't work. Okay, I tried it. It didn't work. Let's move on. But um, I don't ever want to look back and say, I wished I would have tried. I just didn't think I was a good enough knitter. I didn't think I was smart enough. That's the mindset I want to get out of is most things are achievable if you're willing to put in the time. And I think every episode we say the same thing. Learning is a messy process and it needs to be messy for lots of reasons. So we just need to let that happen. Yep. I sound like a broken record, don't I? <laughs> Well, just like as we say yeah. that, when we teach, hundreds of times. Yes, I know. It, it Maybe because we're teachers, we tend to think of that a little more often. Now, any other things you wanted to share? Any podcast? Oh, you know what? Golf. We haven't heard golf. Teach us something. I know. So I looked up, a golf ball should weigh 45 grams. <laughs> this is a golf ball. And this is 45 grams of yarn. Okay. I want to see them. That's amazing. Wow, that is crazy, isn't it? 
Yeah, of course, the ball is so much more dense, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it's just, it gives you a concept of what the yard, you know, it's 45 grams, but, yeah, it's crazy. I didn't realize that. And what's on the inside? I always think rubber bands. Is that true? No, there's different types of cores, and then the dimples are the hard part on the outside, so. Okay, and those are all different um, materials, too? Yeah, yeah. Okay, look at you, 45 grams of yarn. You know how much flack I've been getting from my friends that you are doing my egg cartons for me? <laughs> it's for therapy for me. <laughs> They're like, she just sat there and winds them. Oh, I know. And somebody said the last one you were winding, they've never seen me knit with yellow. You were knitting a yellow one. I said, oh, yeah. I, I gave her the whole skein because I didn't want yes. <laughs> I got busted after the last podcast. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, just a couple of little things about what's happening at Frivolous and Frugal. Um, we continue to do the finish, fix, flip, or frog. Now, in episode 100, we get to do a winner. So if you would like to um, participate or, or, I guess, enter with the chance to win a prize, we always give patterns on Ravelry. I also have a couple of um, Sandy's bags yet. So maybe for episode 100, let's do your choice of either a pattern on Ravelry or you can pick one of the bags that we have had made to uh, for our podcast for Queen Sandy. The question I want you to think about is if you could only knit one pattern, one pattern for the rest of your knitting career, what would that one pattern be? I know. I've been thinking about this myself and I haven't come up with an answer. I'll try to share it on episode 100. I have it down to a couple of different patterns right now. But, you know, we always hear the question, like, if you could only knit with one yarn, if you're on a desert island and could only take one yarn with you, what would you take? I never thought about it. On uh, What pattern would I take? So. Wow. That'll be interesting. So feel free to enter that into the comments below here. And before we um, film episode 100, I think it'll probably be a couple of weeks at least before we do that, um, we will draw for a winner. Now, as far as um, the other thing that still is taking place to the, year, the end of the year is the Burra Cowl 2023. If you wanted to knit or try to knit or at least buy the yarn to knit <laughs> the Burra Cowl, you can enter in on Ravelry. There are several podcasters that are doing the same um, I'll try to scroll those across the bottom of the screen here, but each one of them is having different rules to their drawings. I would say if you're doing doing it inter everybody's, what the heck, increase your chance to win. But again, we will do um, patterns for that. We should probably draw maybe in October because it's been a couple of months. Yeah. So feel free. Again, it does not have to be a finished object. Um, the the young lady that I gave my bra. Called to comment it on the last YouTube that um, she was the one who won it. So it was nice to hear from her and that she's enjoying that. So um, we have no rules. I mean, right, just again, by the yarn, by the pattern, cast on three stitches. We don't care, just, you know, whatever. <laughs> ah, um, that's all I have. I don't think we have uh, anything else planned. I don't know if we'll do another knit along before the end of the year. We have not discussed that yet. So if we decide to, um, we will sure to let you know. All right. Any honorable mentions, Nikki, for you? Um, just a shout out for Irene uh, from Irene Design. She made this muscle girl hat for my best friend, Donna. Um, so that was a pleasant surprise. And Donna just wanted to say thank you. Wow. And you know what? That yarn has to be Ogle Designs yarns. Do you think? Did she tell you the yarn? Um, she did not. If I had, if I had to guess. Um and then that gets darker as you go to the inside. You want to pull it apart? Oh, look at that. Oh, that's amazing. You could wear it either way, couldn't you? Yep, you can. The Muscle Burra is a pattern by Yazolda Tig. Now, Yazolda came out with a new pattern a couple of months ago. It's back here on my screen. It's called the Leaf Hat. She knit it. Uh, she wrote the pattern for new knitters. So if you are interested in doing a hat that ultimately becomes triple thick around the ears, um, that's the pattern. I'm going to try to cast that on um, for some of my Zoom knitting or car knitting or brainless knitting. I'm going to try it in a variegated yarn. So once I get it started, I'll be sure to show you. But um, Yuzolda Teague is brilliant. Um, and I think she may have started a podcast as well. Don't quote me on that. But 
Why do I think I watched one? Hmm, not sure. Or you can make it up. Well, we cannot end any episode of Frivolous and Frugal without the wise words of what would Nikki say? So what would you say, sis? The simple pleasures in life can be a smile, admiring what someone is wearing, chatting with a dear friend, or a simple handwritten note. Tuck those moments away so you can use them when you need a quick pick-me-up. Isn't that true? It's just taking the time to remember. Yeah. Now, I said all that, but one thing I forgot to mention was the West Knits MCAL. Oh, yeah, you better do that. So in the event that you have not been paying attention to anything in the knitting world lately, October 5th starts the, I think, 14th annual West Knits Mystery Knit Along. I just wanted to uh, show you the yarn that I purchased. He recommended um, four solid or semi-solid colors in a gradient. It's called the Geo Gradient. So he's alluded to the fact that it's going to have some geometric to it. That's about all the clues we're getting. I did a Zoom last week with him. No, not just him and I. That would have been amazing. But I did it with, is it Longmont Yarn, Yarn Store does what they call fireside chats. And they um, interview a designer every month. You should get on their mailing list if you want to see um, who they're all um, talking to. But you... Um, pay a small fee to join the Zoom. And it was with Stephen West last Sunday. And he talked about the whole, um, all of his mystery knit alongs. And he showed from year one to where he is now. There were four older shawls that he had did as a mystery that I would like to knit sometime. I definitely can't commit to doing them in the next year, but I would be fun every year to do one of his older ones along with his current one. But these are the colors that I've picked for this year. So I am doing a gray gradient. When I was in Calgary, I went to Ancient Arts. They now have a brick and mortar store. This is their sock yarn called Sock NATO. And the lady that was working there, I just asked her to find some different gradients and she picked these for the grays. Now this one is lightly speckled and he said, that's okay. And can you see in this dark one, there's, it's kind of some tonal as well. So, I'm ready for these. Um, you can purchase the pattern now, but nothing, there'll just be some information to, for you to download. But starting in October, every Thursday morning, a new clue will come out for four weeks. I think I'm going to join along again with Fiber, Irina from Fiber Chats and Martin from Knit365. They'll do some virtual events during that time. And um, I told them I'd gladly participate. Or, Again, it's not like they called me and asked me, but I will participate. Why do I love these grays? Now, you know what I have on standby in case he calls for a shock of color? Pink, of course, bright, bright neon pink. Also, if there's a mohair dare, I may take it this time. I've not put mohair in any of my previous last West Knits, but that is it. Well, yep. Can't wait to see it. And again, it was delightful for me to spend some time with Miss Norma, which may which reminded me, you know, we know her only because of this podcast. When we did those virtual knit togethers during the pandemic, we met her and um, developed a friendship. And now I've had the opportunity to go visit her twice. Um, and if I get her permission, I'll put a picture of her in. She knit this beautiful capelet that um, if you do see the picture, I'll include the name of the pattern as well. But thank you, Norma, for allowing me to come visit and stay. And I think I may have drove her crazy. Yeah. And while we were there, Knit Social announced that in August of 2024, it's going to be Knit City Calgary. So she's like, you think you're coming? Uh, yeah. I don't know how I'll make it work, but I'll make it work. Oh, could it be fun to take, take her to Knit City Calgary? All right, yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was a delightful time there. So I think um, if there's nothing else, we will say goodbye to you. And we sure hope that this week finds your knitting with a little twist of both the frivolous and frugal. And we will see you back for episode 100. Bye. Bye bye.